Hello everyone. In this video, we're gonna look at hyperparameter optimization in parallel using two libraries, Dask and Optuna. These are both very powerful general purpose libraries that can combine really well. Because they're both general purpose, there's lots of different ways in which you can combine them. We find that lots of people use these two libraries in, uh, in parallel, use them together. Um, and they're sort of curious about the right way to use these libraries together for their own problem. And so we're looking at a few examples of increasing complexity uh, and play around and see what makes sense for different problems. I'm gonna focus on Optuna mostly because I mostly talk about Dask. I'm assuming if you're watching my video, you know about Dask. So I'm gonna close Dask down and we'll just uh, focus on this window over here. So <clears throat> Optuna provides a very general purpose mechanism for hyperparameter optimization. Uh, you create an objective function in which you ask for hyperparameters with a different range, different types. You then do some work, and then you return the scores of that work. Optuna then you know, keeps track of the hyperparameters that it gave to you and the scores that you return to it, and it learns from that to give you hopefully better and better hyperparameters so you can optimize your function well. This is a very simple function, right? The solution here is x is two, um, but you can imagine using this for other more complicated situations. Here's an example with PyTorch, for example. We're asking for the number of layers, and then based on the number of layers, we ask for a number of you know, features in each layer, and we build out something that's more complicated. So again, Optuna is very general purpose. You can use it with lots of different libraries or your own libraries. It's a really nice tool. Um, so let's go and play around. I have taken that same objective function, and I've added a sleep here just to simulate a little bit of work. Really though, this is gonna be, you know, PyTorch model.train, something that's gonna take seconds or minutes or hours. Um, but we'll take, you know, 100 milliseconds just to pretend. So let's run this. This is just Optuna on its own, running sequentially on my Mac mini. Um, and it's, it's going. So what we see here is, right, so Optuna is guessing some parameters. How about minus six? How about seven? How about two? And it's finding different values. And it finds that, you know, minus 2.2 is quite a bit better than the other values. So it's going to learn from that. And it's going to start as we go further on. It's going to hunt closer around that value of two the correct value. We get down to the end, we find that it guesses, you know, 2.011. Not bad. It's within a percent of the accurate, of the true value within 100 trials. So that's Optuna. That's great. We could have done that a little bit faster using parallel hardware. My Mac Mini has parallel hardware. This function is very parallelizable. So let's turn on some parallelism. The first thing we're going to do, we're going to use Optuna itself, no Dask yet, but with Optuna with threads. So Optuna has its own threading mechanism that it uses with the nJobs parameter. It took this from scikit-learn and Joblib. And so that same thing can now run and it's already done. It took about two seconds or about a second. Um, great, and it got probably about the same result, right? Yeah, 2.011, almost exactly the same result actually. So first lesson, don't use Dask, just use Optuna with local threads, especially if your local machine has all the hardware you need, right? So if this function is running on a single core, maybe it's using you know, scikit-learn that's just using one, one core, you're good to go. Um, if you happen to need many machines, maybe you need lots of different GPUs, maybe you need lots of different parallel machines, maybe you need a thousand machines, thousand cores, this won't be enough. You're gonna have to go and use some other distributed system like Dask. So we'll go through a couple different ways of doing that, but I'm gonna turn on Dask. I'm just gonna use my local machine for this video because I'm a little bit lazy today. Um, yeah, and so just as a reminder, Dask, you can create a function, you can submit that function, and we'll get it back at future. And then we can get a result by calling future.result. Right, so I'm sending that function x plus one off to run on some other remote machine, in this case, my own machine, and Dask ran it. It ran it in three microseconds. So we can do the same thing with our objective function here. Um, if this code was more expensive, rather than just time.sleep, we'd want to offload it. And so what I'm going to do, for a pretty simple approach, I'm going to make a function f, and I'm going to uh, make a future. I'm going to submit that to run somewhere else. 
and I'm going to get the results and just return that result. And so all I'm doing here is I'm just offloading the work of this objective function to some other machine. Um, now, end jobs, I should use the same end jobs and number of threads as I have the number of cores in my Dask cluster. And so I'm doing a little bit of code here to sort of ask Dask, hey, how many, how many threads do you have on each worker? Sum all of those up. Let's run that many, that many uh, cores. So that's going to run in parallel off the right. Works just fine. So um, again, different approach. There's a slight caveat here. There's actually two caveats. Uh, one, uh, this only works if you have you know hundreds of, of cores. We're actually still using Optuna, the thread pool, to do the parallelism, but now every thread is just offloading its work to Dask separately. That'll work with hundreds of threads, thousands of threads, less so. If you've got hundreds of GPUs, you've got a pretty expensive cluster, you're good already. But again, this isn't going to work at sort of the thousands of cores level. We need something else. Uh, the second caveat is that this only works if we're able to easily separate out the hyperparameter selection, trial.suggestfloat, trial uh, and the, the work, if we can sort of ship the work off to the cluster. Because right? the Opt Optuna is still running locally. Optuna, all the coordination is happening on my local machine. Um, it's just the work that's being offloaded. So there can't be any sort of trial stuff in here. And we can see, actually, if you look at the like PyTorch example, there was some mixing of trials and, and code, right? The, the trials were more complicated. So this approach doesn't always work, but it's very simple. <coughs> okay. Um, but this approach is common. As an example, here's like a more common case um, taken from an example uh, using XGBoost and Dask and Optuna and Coil all together. And, you know, you get a bunch of parameters for XGBoost model and you train that model with those parameters. So this approach actually is pretty useful. It is pretty commonly separable. Okay, but if one of those two caveats isn't met, you're gonna to wanna to integrate Optuna and Dask more deeply. This is nice because Optuna actually has native Dask integration. This is something called the Dask storage. So I can take my exact same um, objective function. I'm not calling submit or anything. It's just vanilla like I did at the very beginning. And instead I'm gonna change Optuna. Optuna, I'm going to create my study. I'm going to give it a Dask storage. And what this is saying is that rather than do all the coordination locally, do all the coordination on Dask. Dask will handle the coordination. It will track all of the hyperparameters and all the scores, and it will make those decisions about what to do. We then submit, rather than calling study to optimize once with 100 trials, we call study to optimize 100 times uh, on Dask. So we're offloading all the work to Dask. Um, and again, this works fine. You know, Dask is now parallelizing that. It finished very quickly. Uh, and this will scale up to, you know, the sort of hundreds or thousands of cores if you want to. And you can be sort of more free with your objective function. It can be any objective function. So this approach is a little bit more heavyweight. There's more technology involved, but it, it eases the burden a little bit on, on you sort of crafting just the right objective function. Okay. So everything we've talked about so far is if you have a model or a, an objective function that runs well on a single machine. And that's the common case. Most folks want to train on one GPU. They just want to do that many, many times in parallel. Everything I've talked about, that's what you want. Sometimes you also have problems where the problem you're solving, the objective function itself must be parallelized. Maybe you're training on several terabytes of data, and so you actually need to run at a large scale. In that case, you might run Dask within the objective function, not just coordinating the objective function. And so here's an example, right? So this is a very simple, dumb objective function, uh, but inside of it, I'm importing Dask array, and I'm constructing a Dask array, and then computing the size of computing the standard deviation based on varying size. Now, for this example, I'm actually not running any parallelism in Optuna. Optuna is going to try one objective function, going to see the result, try another objective function, see the result, another objective function, see the result. Uh, but every time it runs an objective function, it's going to call a task computation. So we're seeing that on the right. right? Every time there's sort of a, a white line here, that's a break in the computation. And task is running, you know, 20 different times. So again, this is parallelism within the objective function, but not parallel uh, outside. 
We could, if we wanted to, run both, right? We could ask Optuna itself to run the same thing, you know, at jobs equals four, perhaps. Now we've got, you know, lots of different Dask jobs running in parallel, all overlapping with each other. It's fine. Dask can handle that just fine. Um, but you don't see a whole lot of benefit. There's maybe a little bit of benefit on the right here. We're getting a little bit more saturation of our cluster, but it's a few percent. And probably actually giving Optuna um, more space in between trials isn't bad. It's probably going to do a better job. So anyway, this is the case if you want to use a single DAS cluster to train many different objective functions, each of which is parallelized with task. What's also interesting to do sometimes is to run many different DAS clusters. Uh, I'm stealing an image from a, a nice example I'll point you to at the end, where it talks about running inside my Jupyter Notebook, I'm running Optuna. Optuna has its own thread pool. Inside each of those threads, it's going to create its own DAS cluster. So now we're going to offload so you have a problem that's, that's way, way bigger. You want to offload each of those problems to a different DAS cluster to run, give you back a result, and then make new DAS clusters to run. Uh, this is like the most heavyweight approach, but can be very powerful, especially with technologies like PyTorch or XGBoost, which have their own parallelism. Um, so the way that this works is something like this. I'm actually switching off a local cluster now because there's no, there's no reason to use local cluster in this context. Um, let's pull this out. So I'm inside of my objective function, I'm making a cluster, a DAS cluster. Here I'm using coiled, but you could use DAS Kubernetes or DAS job queue or DAS gateway. I'm then creating a new client wrapped around that cluster. Then because I've got many different clients running in parallel in the same Jupyter notebook, I'm gonna be very careful. I'm gonna tell this code, make sure you're running on this client, right? Cause I've got, you know, maybe 20 different DAS clients all running inside of this one process. They can get a little bit confused sometimes. Then run my normal DAS code. So this approach is actually quite, quite different. It's quite, uh, it's quite, uh, it's multi-tiered, right? We've got Optuna, which has a thread pool, and each of those threads is asking for a new DAS cluster. That DAS cluster is doing work, it's doing getting some results, and it's coming, bringing that back to Optuna. So this is sort of the more, more complicated approach. Um, I'm actually not gonna run this because it takes a while. Uh, I'll mention a few different things. You might, if your objective function is relatively fast, you know, seconds or minutes, you might wanna reuse your DAS cluster in each thread. Uh, I'm doing this here with the shutdown on close keyword argument, which says, you know, don't, don't, don't close my cluster when I'm done. And said, next time someone asks for the same cluster by name, give them the same, the same one. Um, and that's quite effective, especially if you if you name your clusters with the threading ID they're using. That way, sort of once the thread finishes, it'll release that cluster. That same thread will pick up that same cluster again. You can really reuse um, resources that way well. Um, yeah, I'm also gonna finally point you to uh, this more worked example. Uh, this is by Guido Imperiale, uh, which looks at XGBoost and Dask and Optuna together, it's hyperparameter optimization. And he does a similar thing where he goes through increasingly complex approaches, um, but this time with a much more real worked example. Um, so it's a fun thing to play with. And I'll put that in the notes to the YouTube video. So thanks. Thanks for your time.